Hey, what's good? It's your man Big P, and uh, I'm just here to share my thoughts on the cards from this past weekend. Uh, not really in terms of the actual fights themselves, but just more of more of my disgust um, from the fights from this weekend. Uh, Seems like this was a weekend full of um, robberies. Um, it seems like, I don't know what, what it's about this weekend, but it seems like judges all of a sudden um, forgot how to judge a fight, you know, for the right fighter. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, starting off with the, um, the card from Friday, the PBC Unbounce card. Um, the first sign of this was the uh, so Ivan Golo versus Jamonte Clark. Now, that fight itself... I thought um, Clark lost that fight. You know, Clark lost it handily. Um, I thought you know it was probably I think maybe a what was it probably a seventy eight to seventy four type of win for Golub, and uh, because I didn't think Clark was ineffective at all. I mean I think he got battered around. He got you know I think I think he just got outworked big time and outboxed and. Um, and then the first, and then imagine my surprise, they actually just, they gave it to him. Like, for what? I mean, now, in terms of, like, uh, robberies, that was probably a minor one. But um, it was still a robbery to me, nonetheless. Because I'm like, oh, pretty much fought his heart out. And, <laughs> like I said, I mean, he, he clearly looked like the winner. It wasn't like a close fight. I mean, he literally looked like the winner of this fight. And then all of a sudden, you just get snatched away from you like that. And I'm just, like, thinking to myself... Yeah, this must be the local Ohio judges. They must, they must have, you know, man, you had to make sure that you know he wasn't gonna, he wasn't gonna lose a fight like this. Um, so I mean, the robbery was an air, and then you know we get to the main event. We get um, Robert Easter Jr. defending his uh, lightweight title that he won from Kami um, last summer. Uh, oh no, excuse me, his second, his uh, second title defense versus um, Dennis uh, Shafikov. I think this is his third attempt. Um, at trying to win a uh, title. And um, pretty much by the fourth round, I mean, at first, um, in that fight, you know, Easter was actually using his jab, and, you know, and that's what you have to do to someone who actually brings that type of pressure like Shafikov did. But then by the fourth round, um, Easter totally abandoned the jab and allowed Shafikov to come in and literally do what he wanted. Like, I mean, I think it was that he, 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 he fought the inside, he, you know, he you know, step aside, step around, hit it, blast him with the left hand over and over and over again. And the pressure that it was that he brought to Robert was so was so outstanding. Like you could tell, it wore him out. Like you could tell, Easter couldn't make one adjustment to Shafikov's, um pressure, and 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 it was just absolutely insane. Like even Robert literally was get you know got pretty much exposed in this fight, and. Um, I mean, although he tried, I mean, there were times where, you know, yes, you know, he actually did, you know, he tried to go, um, he throw his little shoe shine combos, and, and in, in some occasions, he would actually land, um, you know, land some serious shots, like serious uppercuts and everything like that. But um, it wasn't enough. Um, I had Shavikov winning that fight pretty handily. I mean, well, not handily, I mean, it was close. It was like a 115 to 113 type of for him. Now it could have easily been a draw. I mean, if you want to keep it that way, but in no, in no way, shape, or form did I think that Easter won the fight. So imagine my. And so I already knew. So when I heard 120, 108, not once but twice from the judges, I already knew what time it was. And then the other score was like 161, 112, which is still not. I mean, which is just less ridiculous than the other two scores in favor of Easter Jr. Now, those are the type of scores that just, that type of, that really um, gives boxing a black eye. Because it didn't, and what makes it more suspicious is because, A, those were Ohio judges. C, those two fighters that I just mentioned, Jamarte Clark and, and Robbie Easter Jr., are both Ohio fighters. So it's, it, so it just makes this so blatant and so biased that this uh, that those scores were actually uttered the way they were. Now, if, with the Jamaica Clark Gaul fight, I mean, you could say, I mean, 
I mean, I think the two scores that were close, like, I mean, there was a 70 74, but I think there were two 77 to 75 scores. Those were slight robbery scores, but Sayed Tepikov on two cards didn't win one round is absolute bullshit. I'm sorry. It's bullshit. And then somebody somebody in the commission needs to be, uh, those judges need, um, need to be investigated for that because there's no way in hell that Shafikov, who, I mean, who left Easter's face pretty swollen, did not win one, I, I just can't see that he just did not win one round on two judges' cards. That is bullshit. That is pure bullshit. And I feel for Shafikov, I mean, because like I said, you know, he fought his heart out. And he really brought it to Robert, and I'm thinking to myself, like, I mean, he, I mean, he arguably had deserved to walk away with the title that, that, or at least a draw, but he did not lose that fight at all. And the fact that he lost the way that it, see, this, this is the thing that that bothers me sometimes about these bad decisions. I mean, you're fucking around with a fighter's livelihood, and then you're over here when you give when you. I mean, if you're going to have a fighter lose, at least have him lose by, like, a North score. Like, now, if you want to give him, like, a closer score, like, um, I mean, hell, even Kami, I mean, when he went, when he fought, I think it was in Ohio, too. I mean, I mean, even he managed to get a split decision. So, and, and, Kami, and Shafikov put up just as much as a performance to get a, you know, get a close call like that. And you're telling me that he loses 120-108? <sighs> what? I mean, that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. And I, I felt for Shavikov, too, because, like I said, I mean, I've watched the... I mean, I, I saw the Vasquez fight, and I actually thought he lost that fight. And uh, I know the Bar uh, Bar uh, Francis Bar Barfalemi fight, too. I mean, that one was a lot closer. And, you know, I felt for him. I was like, you know, the guy works. I mean, he got himself in position. I know he you know, he fought Kami last, and then he, so he, then he beat up on Jamel uh, Herring. And like, and I, I just didn't. I just discuss. It's just disgusting to see him, just get jobbed out like that. Um, I mean, I, I hope that loss doesn't break him. I mean, hell, I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised if he doesn't even fight in Ohio again. I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, you have. I mean, that was kind of. I mean, those scores were just embarrassing, just to even hear uttered by judges of this fight. Uh, so now it brings us over to yesterday's. Um, but no, yesterday's fight card. Well, first of all, like I said the ESPN card. I mean, it was nice uh, in a way. You know, you get a pay per view level, to, you know, type of fight. Although the fights themselves, with the exception of maybe the uh, like the last two, were not really pay per view level cards or pay per view level fights. Um, I mean, we saw we saw Shane Mosley Jr. You know, take you know get a loss, and then Colin, you know, fighting the journeyman. You know, stopping him, kind of thing in the third round, and then you know we have Jerwin defending his title against uh, in Timothy uh, Bradley's words, Japan's. Um, by the way, Timothy Bradley was on one last night. I mean, he was. Uh, I, I can't tell if he's just not if he's doing it on purpose or you know his mind is a little addled. You know, too many wars in the ring or just not a very eloquent type of dude. But uh, yeah, he was out last night with this broadcast. And between that and uh, fighting in con Australia, Argentina, yeah, he was he was definitely on one last night. But um, yes, the main event was uh, Manny Pacquiao defending his WBO Walter Wade title against Jeff Horn. Um, when this fight was announced, I mean, I was like, I, I had no interest in this fight really. Um, I've seen Jeff Horn fight. I mean, I saw him the Randall Bailey fight, um, and nothing in that fight, you know, was uh, that told me that. Um, Interests me that I think, you know, that Jeff Horn would actually be anything more than fodder for Manny Pacquiao. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing was just, like, where is this fight going to be aired? Because, you know, you, if you air a fight like this on pay-per-view, this is, <laughs> you know, it would get, literally, it would get destroyed. I mean, because I know Top Rank has been having these issues with HBO. And HBO was not really behind any of... Thing, I mean, this year, I mean, they had Top Rank had a, had a pay-per-view in the pay-per-view, which had, you know, which had a fight of the year on it, but it didn't, um, I'm pretty sure it didn't sell much because I, I don't think I've heard even an official number. 
But uh, yeah, so it was like, you know, where was this fight going to be aired? And, you know, ESPN, top ranked, you know, side to, uh, you know, if they're not going to, if Trent's not going to do it, then ESPN's going to do it. So this was huge for top rank to get because ESPN on the low, if they wanted to take over boxing in terms of what doing and doing what others are doing, they can do it. They could take it over from HBO and everything like that. I mean, I mean, the ESPN, ESPN had low key have always been champions of boxing. Um, so, you know, it was nice to get you know, a Manny Pacquiao fight that was not a pay-per-view. I mean, that hadn't happened in about 12 years. <laughs> so I'm over here thinking to myself, okay, you know, I'm not interested in the fight, but, you know, it's free and, you know, it's boxing, you know, and I didn't have anything really going on last night. So I was like, yeah, I'll sit in, I'll watch this. And um, so, yeah, I watched it and then go get to the main event. Um Nonsense aside, I do. I, I'm not. Gonna, I mean, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that. Oh, uh, Manny Pacquiao looked good. He didn't look good. I mean, he looked. You start. He started look every bit of his 38 years uh, years of age. Um. I mean, and he looked slightly. Did he looked different from the Vargas fight where he last fought, and. Um, and there were a lot of things. His timing was off. I mean, you could tell like his activity level was down. He was he was he was sloppier than usual. But like I said, I mean, this these are all things. These are when you fight. You know, when you, he had what 65, 66. Um, that's yeah, or probably even uh, almost. I think it was probably almost seventy pro fights. Um, and then I mean it happens. Like, the guy's been the guy's been a pro since nineteen ninety five. You have those type of fights, have his wars, you slow down. And he and he looked even far removed from what he used to be. Yet, regardless, he still had more than enough to beat up Jeff Horn. Now Jeff Horn, he didn't come here to fight. And I mean one thing I know is he he struggled to make weight, but when it when it came to the right, he looked big. I mean he looked like a straight up super middle. Um and he had a size advantage. He had a very functional size advantage, and he knew it. Um, he was, I mean, from the first, I mean, he, he was aggressive the first round, super aggressive. And then, you know, he really tried to use his weight advantage on Manny. And he got, he, in, 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 he was so reckless at times. He was moving in. You can see, and I think early in the fight, he was moving in and got his mouthpiece dislodged by Manny. Um, I mean, at first, like, I mean, I mean, there were a couple of rounds in early you can give you could probably give him after that. Uh, you can give him early, maybe because it's a straight off aggression. But even then, Manny was still able to rake him with the left hand over and over and over again. I mean, he, I mean, his eye was cut open. I mean, these are the type of things that you know. Okay, this is about to be stopped. And uh, and then after that, you have the round, the knife round, which. Manny pretty much beat him from pillar to post for nine minutes. I mean, that was just, that was vintage. That was almost vintage Manny in terms of beating. And yet, and this was the fight, that round, I thought that fight, I thought they were going to call that fight at the end of the, at the end of that round, because the ref was like, you know, he was just beaten so badly. He was like, you got to show me something or you stop the fight. And he was right, he was the right to do it. It wasn't like any bullshit or anything like that. He was in his right because Jeff had to, at that point had taken the beating. So, I mean, Jeff, to his credit, I mean, I think he did win the round after that, but I think he dropped the last couple rounds. Um, so, I mean, and then, but there was, I mean, granted, it was, he had a lot of effort, but I failed. But one thing about this fight, too, that Horn was incredibly dirty. I mean, this is part of the reason why I was like, when I watched the bait fight, I said, like, that's why Bailey probably fought on this, sat on his stool. He didn't want any more of that shit. Um, yeah, he, Horn was super dirty with his head. I mean, and later in this fight, especially after it was, you know, apparently you could score a fight. You know, in Australia, you could score a fight if you if you grab somebody in a headlock or you lace them with headbutts. I mean, there were two headbutts. I mean, they opened up some serious cuts. I mean, this fight was bloodier than I expected it to be. But apparently, though, if you do that to many, if you do that to a fighter, to any fight, especially the main pack, that's as good as a legal punch. <laughs> you know, it's. It, I mean, Horn. I mean, Horn was dirty. I mean, intentionally or unintentionally, he was dirty. I mean, it was just. I mean, his his way of tying up 
Manny Pacquiao was either lying on the ropes or putting him in a damn bulldog headlock and walking around over and over a lot. And he walked it again tied up, too. That was the thing that he was doing. He wasn't, I mean, it was just mind boggling the way that he fought. Now he was determined, yes, he was determined. And then, you know, it was, you know, it's great that he actually landed, he stayed, he, you know, he, he lasted the 12. So we get to the scorecards, and you know one, of them, and I had the score one seventeen one eleven to Manny Pacquiao. It was clear, it was it was a clear victory, even as Manny Pacquiao didn't look didn't look good. He looked all of his thirty eight. So when I heard one seventeen one eleven, okay, okay, you know there. Are, and then after that, I saw one fifteen one thirteen. I'm like, hmm, it's close enough for my, for Manny, I guess. But when I heard the new WBO welterweight champion, I almost flipped. Now, granted, I was not drinking. If I was drinking, it would have been like this for same reaction I did years ago when in the first uh, Pacquiao Bradley fight where I threw a um, I threw my bottle against the door against the door of my of my old place. I can't do that anymore. I have a bigger place now. <laughs> you know, I'd have to it ha I'd have to go zigzag around before it reached the actual door of my spot. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it, it was just, it, it, it was just mind boggling to me that this, that something like this happened, happened again. Um, in no sense of the word did I think Jeff Horn won that fight. Uh, Teddy Atlas was very adamant about that. You know, he told him straight up to his face that he thought he lost. And, you know, and then you have Stephen A, who, uh, Stephen A, just to, I, I just, I don't think highly of his boxing knowledge. I mean, he's, he's not knowledgeable. I mean, hell, I mean, the the slice that he gave to, uh, especially to someone like Randall Bailey, was just disgusting. <laughs> Never mind the fact that Bailey was probably a was a welterweight champion no more than four or uh, five years ago. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, Stephen Hay, you know, I guess, I mean, obviously, I mean, he's not knowledgeable, but even he knows. I mean, but he did his part by playing up. Uh, uh, to play up the nonsense that happened, you know, and like this, that, you know, and they were, you know, going at Timmy Bradley was saying that, hey, yeah, he benefited from that type of decision too. You know, Bradley was getting mad and everything. Like that that was pretty hilarious. But what's not hilarious was just watching this, you know, Horn is over here, you know, saying like this, you know, you know I boxed him, I didn't take much damage, you know, and then afterwards calls out Floyd Mayweather uh, bringing the walking cane. I'm like, Floyd, I mean, you 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 don't have anything. I mean, Floyd himself is won't fight him. <laughs> There's no question about that. Floyd will not fight no Jeff Horn. Um, Floyd is busy doing sideshow shit. He's not gonna go fight someone like Jeff Horn, especially in Australia of all places, for that belt. Um, but yeah, it, it was just it was just disgusting that to see um, a legend like Manny Pacquiao just get uh, just get shafted once again it was shafted like this again like i i just don't i mean the only time i mean there are examples of this like you know when you see uh when george foreman faced shannon briggs and you know at that time foreman was had been stripped of both his belts but he was literally but he was the lineal champion in that division and foreman i mean pretty much when foreman won the title he pretty much didn't play ball anymore per se and then, you know, he had a lot of, uh, you know, there were a lot of uh, disagreements and stuff of that nature. And then they were like, you know, we can't get, we, we have to get Foreman out of here. And, you know, the Shannon Briggs fight was one of those, it was an example of a fight like this that I can compare this to, in which uh, Shannon Briggs, you know, good guy and everything like that. And I thought he lost that fight pretty pretty handily, which is a contrast considering to the other fights I thought Foreman lost, <laughs> clearly. Um but like I said, it was uh, you know sometimes you got you know, sometimes there are ways that the establishment will get you know take out a fighter, and uh, that was one of that was a that was one of those ways, and that's what it felt like to me. Um, now for what now the reason why I don't understand it because Horn is I mean unless I mean I, first of all I don't even know Horn's promotional uh, deal if he's even signed with Top Rank or anything like that or he's just independent or or, that, or he gave Bob options on this fight I just don't see where the end goal is giving Jeff this title I mean I know Manny is like oh we can um, 
we can, uh, he has a, a rematch clause. But why? I mean, I, I, I mean, the fight itself was not that appealing for me to say I want to see it again. I mean, it, it was one of those things, I mean, well, so what? So you could say, uh, oh, yeah, Manny Pacquiao turned back the challenge and took the zero of Jeff Horn. Really? Uh, it, it, and this is why it's a mess. Now, if Jeff was competitive, at least, you know, and I actually thought it can go either way, then I'm like, okay, fine, you know, do what you need to do. But this was not one of those fights, and it was just disgusting just to see someone like this getting shafted. Um, especially on this, on, especially on someone on this level, that the legend that he is. Um, but I'm like I said, I'm not going to ignore the fact that Manny Pacquiao, was, I mean, his age is starting to show. I mean, the fights are catching up to him. He is, um, he's, he's aging and he's on the slide. And no amount of, I mean, he may, I don't know if you say it, I don't know if he just had his one last good fight, if you want to call the third Bradley fight, probably his last good fight in his, you know, as everyone said, you know, they always say every boxer has that one last great fight, you know, and that was the third Bradley fight that he actually looked at. And afterwards, he looked, and that was him shaking off rust. And then after that, you have the Vargas fight, which he knocked him down, but, you know, he used to, you know, I mean, he won pretty handily, but he was starting to show age. And then, you know, he let Horn pretty much rough him up. Um, and uh, rough him up the way he did, which, and also, too, another thing is his finishing ability. Usually, when someone takes an onslaught like that from Manny Pacquiao in, um, in that ninth round, they the fighters used typically either go into a shell or they, you know, and that's pretty much the fight. And another thing is like, but Manny was so tired from, I guess, I guess, doing too much energy from the fight that, that he allowed Horn to come back in that round. And then, you know, but then after that, Horn went to like a, a shell, if per se, you know, kept putting him in headlocks and stuff like that. And you got how the fight played out. Um, also, the real losers of this fight, too, are the young welters, the young, uh, the younger welterweight, especially on the PBC side. Because I've said all before, I mean, most people like to say, oh, you know, want to ignore the fact that May Pacquiao is an actual welterweight champion. You know, I think right now you have Keith Thurman, who is part of the best welterweight in the world. And then you have Errol Spence, who just took the belt off Kel Brook. But now I've always said that, that I've always said that some of these the younger welterweights shouldn't be so short sighted. I mean, they should so some of them should have been very vocal, really vocal about going after Manny Pacquiao. because um, uh, cause Manny Pacquiao for all to is a name. He's a he's a name, he's a legendary name in this sport. And I always felt I mean, I know that, I mean there was Broner, there was Adrian Broner, who I think was probably the one who was at the, you know, there was talks of him facing him. And truthfully told, that could have been a performance for him. I mean, granted, at the time, you know, at the time, I think Packer would have been Broner because Broner doesn't throw enough punches for my liking, among other things. Um, but this would have been a fight. This would have been, like I said, if any, uh, this would have been a rub for any, like if Key Firm had actually managed to get Pacquiao in the ring, or because now he's recovering from injury, and actually be him. This would have probably solidified him, period, you know, as the man, and that's the man in the division to beat. Um, and, of course, just grabbing the WBO belt. Spencer was probably too early for him. I know there was, I know Danny Garcia was probably one, is like one welter that probably should have faced him. Uh, and, but, yeah, like I said, you know, anyone, someone should have been more forward in actually trying to get after Packers, Seth, letting a Jeff Horn do it. And now it's to the point that like, even if May Packer continues and, and then one of them gets him back in the ring. I mean, I mean the damage is done. I mean, there's no real special thing. Uh, there's no special. There's no. The, the spe, there's no real special uh, reward really for beating Manny Pacquiao at this point. Even if they do, because they just didn't do it before. Because now you have a Jeff Horn that says that hey, I beat Manny Pacquiao. I'm now the WBO welterweight champion. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's a lost opportunity for those fighters. Um, so yeah, it was just, yeah, although this weekend was just, it was just crazy how many bad decisions, bad judging there was. Um, and of course this one's going to be more blatant, more blatant. I know I'm going to see this debate on ESPN for a couple of days and whatnot. Um, it was, it, it, it was just disgusting. I was just disgusted, disgusted overall by the judging this weekend from these fights. 
Um, and boxing was having uh, pretty much having a low, a great year on the on fight level, with minimal nonsense. And then you see that, and it's like that's what people gotta say. Now I'm already seeing the tweets on boxing is dead, boxing is bullshit, MMA is this, MMA is that over boxing, all this, all this type of stuff, all these, uh, all these uh, old rehashed arguments because there was a blatant robbery that was that was aired. So what can you do, right? Um, so yeah, I mean those are my thoughts on the fight. So uh, till next time, peace.